Two mass shootings 13 hours apart and new demands from so many in this country that our leaders do something, that they offer more than words. I have talked with so many families here and it never gets easier. Their lives have been destroyed forever and this time everyone wondering here, when will it end? The death toll here in El Paso rising tonight, at least 22 dead now. And in Dayton, Ohio, nine more people losing their lives. Tonight, what we have just learned about the gunman who walked into this Walmart with that assault style rifle, what he did right beforehand, this surveillance obtained by KTSM, the families diving for cover from the relentless gunfire, thousands running in fear. In so many cases, I heard about the children who ran out on their own. Tonight, President Trump addressing the nation, what he said about racism, about white supremacy, placing much of the blame on mental health, video games, and the internet. But we begin tonight with what happened here, what we did not know until today. Go, 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 come on! Tonight, a startling revelation. What they believe the suspect, 21-year-old Patrick Crucius, did before this moment, before he entered the Walmart with his weapon. This surveillance obtained by KTSM. Tonight, law enforcement officials telling ABC News that before the chaos broke out, run, me out, run. That they believe the suspect had been looking for a good place to target and shoot Mexicans. Law enforcement officials telling us Crucius entered the Walmart on Saturday morning, first with no weapon, apparently to case it. Then they say, satisfied with what he saw, up to 3,000 shoppers inside, he left the store, armed himself, and then returned. Tonight, we are hearing from the survivors who crawled across that floor when he came armed with that assault-style rifle. Sylvia Sacedo on the floor with her 91-year-old mother. She pulled out her phone and began recording in disbelief over what she could hear, what she could see. They were in the cafe having coffee. Now they were on the floor, and she says he came toward them, turning around when he heard customers running past him to get out. He began firing at those customers instead. This is her video as she lie on the floor with her terrified mother. The shots kept coming. You can see someone run by to escape while a worker crouches behind the counter, motioning, signaling to others. Then the rapid fire again. And then silence. The lady at the cash register set everybody down firing um, um, the gun and um, so I got under, under the table and I pulled my mom because she was lying on the seat and I was trying to pull her down so then we were just hiding there so then I saw when the guy I just saw the guy walking in but from the knees down Sylvia telling me she believes they are alive only because the gunman heard other people run past him what were you saying to your mother we were praying she was praying and she was crying and I was holding her hands and I, I was like, I can't believe she's so calm. She's 91 years old, so I need to stay calm too. And what you rarely see is what happens when there is finally a break in the gunfire. Sylvia makes the decision that she and her 91-year-old mother should get out. They're gone? She grabs her mother. They get up, not sure if it's over. Huh? We have to leave, Sylvia says. Where do we go? Outside. And from inside her car, oh my God! She realizes the horror. An officer carrying a child. They see a man who's been shot. These women running out with children, one in their arms. And tonight, here in El Paso, the death toll is still rising. At the Del Sol Hospital this evening, the lead trauma surgeon telling me that what he has seen here reminded him of his time overseas. But this reminded you of what you saw in Iraq and Afghanistan. Very much so, yes. Inside this room, Octavio Lazarte, who was in that Walmart, he was shot, but he survived. His nephew, just 15, was shot and killed right in front of him. You can't unsee them now. Close my eyes, I still see them. He and his nephew were at the bank inside the Walmart. He tells me they knocked on the door to try to get behind the clerk counter, but the door would not open. They turned, and there was the gunman. Well, what did he look like? What did he sound like? Oh. I took a quick um, glance at him and he had glasses. That's all I remember. He had glasses. Those tactical glasses. And he didn't say a word? No, he didn't talk at all. But you could see in his face, his intentions. We look at the photo of his nephew, Javier Rodriguez. I'm 
sorry. He tells me he wishes he had one last chance to say something. What would you have said to him? I love him. Like, I, I can't be without him. He was like my son. He is heartbroken over his nephew. And there was one more family we have been following here. The story of this young mother, 25-year-old Jordan and Chando, and her husband, Andre. We knew the young mother died while holding on to her two-month-old baby. They believe she was trying to protect the baby, and she did. And now we have learned that the father, Andre, was found in that Walmart too, right near his young wife and his baby. Jordan, you knew that she had tried to save her baby. Yes, we did. And you think that she actually paid with her own life to save her child? Both parents. From what we understand, both parents, it sounds like. Their baby covered in blood, but alive. The baby had blood bruises on his head, broken fingers, and he was full of blood. And everybody was scared and panicked that it was his, the baby's blood, but it happened to be his parents' blood on the baby. So thanks, thankfully, he's okay. Tonight, three young children without their parents. The baby Paul, 18-month-old Victoria, and Skylin, who turned five the day she lost her parents on Saturday. The family is now determined to raise them, to keep the children together. To pull them apart would be the ultimate tragedy. I think together as a family, we'll remind them who their parents were, what they did for them, the love they had for them, and clearly displayed the ultimate sacrifice for them. That family determined to raise those three children and to keep them together. Just one example of what these mass shootings do to families all over this country. And the police chief here, Greg Allen, telling me that there's no question in his mind the gunman traveled 600 miles here from outside Dallas because of the makeup of El Paso, because of its proximity to the U.S.-Mexico border. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.